Welcome back to Satoki Tech. The folks at DWIN contacted me. They wanted to see if I would like to review their DWIN UART or serial displays. These are based on this T5L series chip. It, think of it as a display with a programmable control interface that has a serial output that would control another low level board. So you could have like an Arduino running stepper motors and a 3D printer and this UART display from DWIN would be the control panel for that 3D printer. So you're virtualizing the display and control functions into the DWIN UART display. So let's go ahead and take a look at this product page. This is the DWIN store on AliExpress. Here's the DWIN global website and they've got downloads for their tools, their development guide. They've got some video tutorials. They've got data sheets and they have some factory demos. So it's all worth taking a look on the website. This is the specific unit that we're going to be working with today. This is the DMG48320 F035. Let's talk about that. This means it's 480 by 320 and the display is 3.5 inches. And then there's subcategories with touch, which would be WTC or without. So we have the WTC unit with touch. Let's go ahead and unbox it and check it out. Okay, let's crack open the box and see what they sent us here. Yeah, here's that DMG48320. And this is with touch. Yeah, 48320. So it's a 3.5 inch display and the WTC is with touch. I think that's with touch capacitive. All right, so that's the T5L processor attached to the display. So this is the programming interface here. It's got the USB connection. It also has a slot for the TF card. It's got a little buzzer on there too. And there's a bunch of uh, pinouts here. Multiple serial interfaces there. Only one serial interface, the serial two, is available at startup. You have to, you know, install an application to use the serial out port. So we'll take the DMG48320 out of the protective case there. And we want to mate this ribbon cable up here with the programming interface. Just got to lift the little bar, make sure we get the ribbon cable in there straight. Get enough pressure on it and it looks good. And we'll go ahead and press down the bar and we're all set. Looks good. Yeah, so you could fold it along there or fold it along here and it would fit into a smaller case like that. Okay, so let's see what the demo firmware looks like here. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. Get that nice splash screen, touch the screen, and we got six buttons to click on. What a lovely picture. Go back. Yeah, that's interesting. Push the button. Looks like the strawberry and the light bulb are mixed up there. Okay, turn fan on, turn fan off. What else we got here? Okay, well, it's not going to give me a negative number, but I can go up. Got a slider here. Oh, it's adjusting the screen brightness. And, oh, a cute little animated image. How lovely. Okay, so that's the out-of-box experience. Okay, so we got to unbox our DMG48320. And let's go ahead and see how to program it. They have downloads here for tools. This is where you download the DGUS tool. They have the development guide. And they also have factory demos. If you find one for your unit, you could load it on there. We saw... There was default software already installed on our DMG48320. But we're going to, I'm just going to start out with something real simple. I want to show you how to use the DGUS tool. And we're going to do Hello World. How about that? Okay, so I've downloaded the DGUS tool and extracted it here. This is DGUS 7.624. Let's go ahead and launch it. All right, we're just going to create a new project. 
The New Project dialog is also where you want to set your screen resolution. In my case, I'm going with 320 by 480. I'm going to make a new folder. Okay, that's our selection there. D, hello world. Okay. So one of the first things we're going to do now is we're going to create a background image for our display. So let's get a picture of Shotoku Tech here. Yeah. I'm just going to grab this. We're going to open it with my ear fan view. This is a small image here. You're looking for a 24-bit color depth. You can use JPEG, bitmap, or PNG format. So I'm just going to crop this out so we can get a 320 by 480 image. And go edit crop. Image resize resample. Okay, I'm not going to preserve the aspect ratio, so I'm going to go... 320 by 480. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save that. And let's go back to our Hello World folder on the D drive. And I'm just going to call, and this is going to go in the D Win Set folder. Everything that is going to wind up written onto the display needs to be in the D Win Set folder. And I'm going to call this zero. You have to have numbers in front of everything. We'll, we'll learn more about this as we go along, but you want to have a zero in front of your background image. So I'll go ahead and change this so it's, so this is making sense here. Okay. Okay. So we got our image. So we go into the DGUS tool. And we're going to add that image. Add. Have to go back into our D drive again. Hello world. Okay. We're adding that image. Okay. Now, word of advice here. All of these images that you add here have to be processed into this, basically it's an icon library generator. It puts it in a format that the DWIN display can work with. So we're going to go ahead and open the ICL generator right now. We're going to select the directory. Oh good, it knows right where we're at. Select the folder. Okay, it's found our image. And we're just going to go ahead and generate the ICL. Now here again, you have to have a number in front of the file name. And for the ICL file, you want 23, and we'll call it Hello World. There we go. Compression finished. I'm going to go ahead and open that folder so we can see what's going on as we continue to work along here. Okay, so we're focused on what's in the DWIN set folder. Okay, so, so far we've got the bitmap and we've got our Hello World ICL file. And notice uh, that's got a number 23 in front of it. Very important. Super important. Okay. Now, another thing that we can do is we can generate a font. I just want to show this to you and I want to make sure that it's going to center my fonts. So, I'm going to go ahead. And this is at the bottom of the welcome page here. Right. So we're just going to go ahead and use this standard font, this Microsoft Sans Serif. But if I put a W, see, it, it just runs right off the page there. So we need to kind of scale it down a little bit. Let's scale it down, see if we can get it to fit in there. All right. We don't need to do anything as far as the shift. See, now it's going to go off. See that I'm looking in this little black square trying to get it centered. I think W's or M will be the widest letters in the alphabet here. See now it just ran off the page in that direction. Okay, so now we're going to create this DWIN USKI HZK file. Notice it has a zero in front of it too. Very important. Now this is actually going to wind up in the original DGUS program folder. 
and we're going to have to copy it into our project folder. Almost there. Okay, so we've generated that font file. I'm going to close this and let's go into the file system and go get it. DGUS tool. I want to open in a new window here. So there's that font file we just generated. You can see the time is today at 3.44 p.m. I'm going to just copy that. And you want to paste that in your DWIN set folder. Paste. Okay, so we've got a background image. We've got a font. Let's go ahead and build out our user interface. Again, here you can see there's the welcome screen and there's tools at the bottom that you need. And then this is where you're actually building out your interface. I'm just going to go to display control and add text to display. And so here we're going to draw a window right there. Let's see, I want to get it under Shotoku's chin there. There we go. <laughs> All right, so over here on the right hand side, we can see there's a, we've got a box that's named text box. Uh, you can just leave this default. You need to put a number in here. Uh, the instructions I've seen so far says it's uh, very arbitrary. I first put in 5,020 and then I put in 1,000 and it worked the same. You have to put something in there. I'm going to select my text color. Text color is white. Okay. Here, the encoding mode. This is very important. That font generator we just used, you always have to set encoding mode to hex 2 GBK. And I want to use center alignment. Uh, leave this tick box ticked, whatever you do. Text length, I'm going to bump this out to 200. I think you can set it to something over... Uh, up to 500 and something, not sure. I'm going to leave font ID and font ID 1 the same. Now here, the X and Y lattice numbers, this is going to be the size of the character. Okay, so these are going to be 48 dots by 48 dots. All right, and because we're doing Hello World, the initial value down here is going to be Hello World. Alright. Yeah, I just realized I'm blocking the lower right corner here. Down here at the very bottom is where we're going to type Hello World right here. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, So, but you got to see all the rest. So, you can go here into Display and you can Preview. Looks like it will work out. Now, we could jockey this horizontal like that just to get a little spacing. I'm going to leave it at zero. Let's see what happens. Because I think it's going to space out automatically anyway. But we'll, we'll see what happens. So you can preview. In that preview, if you had buttons and controls and stuff, you can actually test them out in that preview window. So it's quite a, quite a powerful... I, I, like I said, this it was kind of daunting to look at the DGUS tool without any experience with it and, you know, try to get started with it. Like I say, the folks at DWIN have been helpful with the questions uh, that I've had so far, so thanks for that. And we've gotten this far. Now, first of all, obviously, we're going to want to save our project. All right. Then, this is very important here. Again, let's go into our DWIN folder. Okay, so, oh, we've got a touch file and a show file. So touch file is for the touch screen controls. The 14, the show file, is for the display. we got our font, we got our image library, and we've got this config file. These are all very important. You want to hit generate to make sure you've got the latest of everything there. Generate. Okay. So now we're going to put this on the TF card. They want you to format it using DOS. <laughs> Basically, you want to make sure it's a FAT32 format with uh, the block size at, uh, at 4096, four which is the default. But they repeatedly, in all their videos, show formatting using the format command in DOS. So format slash Q is for quick. My particular 
SD card is the drive letter H. Make sure you're not formatting the wrong drive, whatever you do. And then you want a file system as FAT32. And again, that uh, allocation is 4096. And there we go. All right, I don't need a volume label. So we've got our TF card formatted. At this point, we should just be able to copy our DWIN set folder. So we're going to go up in Hello World. I'm going to copy the DWIN set folder, copy, and I'm going to paste it into my freshly formatted TF card, drive H. And now we're ready to eject that. So we're going to take that SD card out, pop on over, and put it into our display. Let's go. Okay, so when you go to put the TF card in the programming interface, make sure your display is not powered up. So you can see it's not powered up. I put the card in, we power it up. And let's get an up close look here. Yeah, you see it's reporting the files that it's copying off of the ST card to the T5L processor. So three bin files. It's copying the font file now. So that was the 13 touch file, 14 show file, 22 config and the 23 ICL file. There we go, now we're gonna power it off, eject the TF card. And we're gonna power it up again. I hope our program works. There it is, hello world. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you can get this far, then you know you can do something with this. Okay, well, I hope you found it interesting checking out this D-Win UART display, the DMG48320. And leave a comment down below on what you want to see me do next. Give this video a like. And before you go on to watch more of the videos on my YouTube channel, Shotoku Tech, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.